Um, give me your name, position, and what you do or what you're in charge of. Okay. okay. Mary Garcia, M-A-R-Y-G-A-R-C-I-A. -A. I'm the interim chief of police at UC Santa Cruz Police Department. Cool. And then for the event, for the event, for the trainings, how many different scenarios do they run here and what kind of different scenarios? So I'm not going to go into the details of the yeah. scenarios. I can tell you they, it's anywhere from three to five. Mm -hmm. It just depends on how many students we have, um, both on the fire and police side, so that they run smoothly because we only need both of them to work together. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah and so it seems you know, uh, that it's, they're doing really, working on the coordination between the fire and the police. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, working on the coordination, communication, and then knowing what each other's role is in a situation like this and what to expect from each other. So knowing, you know, at arrival, what does what does police expect from fire? What information does police provide fire so that they know if it's safe to come in and start getting in to save lives? And also communicating, well, what have the police done on scene already that has maybe stabilized patients or mm -hmm. identified who's more critical, who needs the higher level of care? So is it safe to say that the primary the primary goal of this active um, shooter training is for the police to go in and to neutralize and to stabilize the situation. And then number two is to coordinate the work with the fire department of them coming in and taking out the, the um, victims and such. Does that sound the, about... Yeah, it's the coordination of just getting in there faster together or yeah. just as quickly as possible together to save lives. Okay. So how often does that... Do they try to go in basically at the same time so that the fire is covering the outskirts while the police are in, in the front securing so the, the, the goal is to get fire in there as quickly as possible so initially depending on the situation a fire may not be able to get in there right away or with police i you know yeah. the the main goal is to neutralize the threat on the police side and get fire and medical aid in there as quickly as possible uh, let me ask go back a little steps with the actual um, training themselves, uh, you're saying that they've been going on for nine years. Nine years, yes. And was it originally just one agency that started it? And how has it evolved to what it is now with doing over 40 something? Chief Always, he was asking me about how it started if it was just one agency to begin with. Yeah, so it started with the UC Santa Cruz Police Department. And we tried, at the time, we had the UC uh, Santa Cruz Fire Department. And so we started with a very small group, uh, quickly realizing that we needed to expand it. Uh, and then uh, the next year, uh, Santa Cruz Fire came. Some people from Santa Cruz PD, Highway Patrol immediately jumped in. So it just kind of grew from that. And then year th three or four, we had just about every agency in the county uh, from law enforcement side mm -hmm. and a couple agencies from the fire side mm -hmm. all the way to where we are now every agency in the county and every fire agency in the county is working together so it's a huge it was a huge undertaking but it's a phenomenal accomplishment and you were the kind of the person that started this correct I, yeah. you don't you don't need yes, to be shy are. about yes, it you That's why <laughs> I'll, I'll and so so uh, <laughs> Because and, and, of and, that. It's, and it's not just it's not about me right right no, no. i've got i've got 35 to 40 dedicated instructors that from day one mm -hmm. uh put their heart and soul worked with us believed in this uh, understood the need did the research uh helped to get this class certified for on the law enforcement side we uh this year we weren't able to to do it but on prior years we were getting uh continuing professional education on the fire side um, covid kind of yeah. put a wrinkle in that but we'll get it back uh so it, there was a there's a whole lot of administrative work that was done by every single one of these instructors and every one of these instructors deserves all the credit for for, for this program growing the way it did and so are you still technically like the point man for all this I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> I think if you You're ask trying all, to hand it off to people. No, 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 no. If you ask all the instructors, yes. Um, yeah. But I'm trying to. Yeah. I'm trying to let it be their program. Yeah. But pretty soon it's going to be a CSU UC joint thing because it probably get, yeah. that's. I think that's, that's the, the next the next iteration. Yeah. yeah, that's good. So then is this of basically take a full year of coordinating and build things up for getting ready for the next year so right when we're done with this then you're starting all over again. Take about a month and... off 
and then we start all over. And so, because we want to know the lesson. Every day we do evaluation, yeah. we debrief. We got to gather all that. Uh, we have Chad who's over there. That's uh, you know making sure we're meeting all of our training objectives every day. We have observers that do that for us. We we need to, we we need to make sure that what we say that we're going to train, we're training on it. So we don't want to miss anything. I had a good question. I just forgot. No, no, it's good. Um, the what was it? It was about. Um, oh yeah. So is there a specific department that is in charge of running this? UC Santa Cruz. Okay, but it's UC Santa Cruz. But I mean, like, is there a division that's just the training and? I wish. Okay, no, so it's, no, we it's don't just, have that kind of it's just it's just it's just the force in general. That, it's, it's, it's everywhere there was that comes a in. chief of waste when he was chief, and then um, a couple of officers. Yes, yeah, so I was about to say, do you have a team that works yeah. with you? That, that they, this is their full time job? No, is no. Okay. This is a collateral duty for all of us. <laughs> so, yes, whenever you guys have time, you guys are picking yeah, up the phone. Yeah, so, and... you know, part of it is how do we. From, from, so, here's, here's what we can't find we can't find a true model of how to do this. Uh, and so, we believe that this is the model to take forward. There's a lot of different larger agencies. Uh, NYPD, LAPD, mm -hmm. San Francisco, right? Uh, that have, you know, they have a full-time training team. They have a full-time cadre of people that can do this all day, every day. But what about the little agencies like UC mm -hmm. Santa Cruz? And that was that was the purpose, right? How do we get involved and how do we form something that we take all these small agencies from th throughout the county that doesn't have anybody full-time and how do we put it together so that we can all be successful as well? And we can't send everybody to San Jose or San Francisco or, you know, New yeah. York, right? So, and out there so far, there could be, at least in California, we haven't seen a model where the small agencies have all come together like we have and been successful. I was about to say, so that there is no plan, like so this is how you run a train. This is all the steps you need to do. You kind of just... Figure there's it plans out. out there, but there's nothing co as comprehensive that we can find. It's, I'm not saying that there's not yeah. as comprehensive as us. And, and when you say small departments, I mean, you think about the smaller fire departments yeah. locally, even, you know, the volunteer fire departments, they're included in this. Yeah, the whole, the normal mm, everybody, fire, especially after the wildfires, like they're a part of this. And, you know, nobody provides that to them as far as I know. Well, and then is there any, if somebody wanted to volunteer to help be a part of the ongoing training and um, yes. putting this event together, is there? Absolutely. Cool. And then how and, would somebody uh, get that info? So the, the community volunteers are so vital for this. We can't do this without community volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have school teachers. Uh, we have faculty from the university. We have retired individuals. We have moms and dads, uh, people from local businesses. We have 10-year-olds to 83-year-olds. Uh, and they pr pr provide not only the support, mm -hmm. uh, but they provide the role players that, that we absolutely need. It's so critical and vital for all of us. Oh. And we moulage them. And then throughout the year yeah. or two, we go out and we start talking to people like the Red, Cl Red Cross, right? What can you, what, what have you learned in your logistical areas? Mm -hmm. How can we incorporate you? We have uh, other agencies, you know, Gilroy and others that, that we call, we talk, we, we learn from them, and then we put it all together as a big package for the training. Cool. And then, so how would people that want to volunteer, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, they can just call the police department, UC Santa Cruz Police Department. We'll get somebody to them and, and, and we'll go from there. You can go to the website, you know, email me and, you know, I can route them to the right person and start planning ahead. Thank you guys so much. That's